Well, this is not supposed to happen. It's against the law, even violates the Constitution. But when there's no room at the inn, so to speak, at Western State Hospital, prisoners are mixed with patients. Can we track what, every, what pennies is whose and what it went to? No, we can't. And that's also well, but why... that's what bank statements literally are for. Well, you know, and if, if the things he accused me of were so black and white, then it wouldn't have taken him so long to get to where they're at. And that's, He that's didn't have access to the accounts, Drew. Well, he's he had, had to sue you in order to see where you spent his and, money. And Records compiled by DSHS revealed that the mental health backlog cost counties and city jails more than $1.6 million every six months. Astounding. Wow. How has he not been arrested, John? Well, that's one of the things that the attorney, Bruce Daniels, and talk to us about is that according to Washington State statutes, there is a provision that when you're dealing with this amount of money, mm -hmm. $970,000 and more over all of those lawyers' fees and everything else, mm -hmm. he actually is required to notify the authorities. We know that some of them tonight are watching this report. Wow. John, thank you. Our Kathleen Deutsch was supposed to have been in this part of the jail for just a few days to dry out and get ready for trial following a DUI arrest. Instead, she died. Court filings allege inmate monitoring rules were broken and staff failed to tell the whole truth. <laughs> More evidence this jail has a long way to go with reform. It's called the Veterans Preference Point System. If you've served your country, Washington wants to serve you with bonus points on exams for law enforcement and other competitive jobs. It's the law, but as we're about to reveal, the Washington State Patrol hasn't always followed that law. As the reports say that nurses and staff witnessed a number of cases of a patient in the dementia ward sexually abusing other residents. The family, experts in the field, and even a state senator say this nursing home should have been stopped. Tucked away in central Washington near the winding Wenatchee River, Kashmir Convalescent Center calls itself a special place for those in need. You are responsible for this adult. People are paying and they expect you to take good care of their family. For Linda Freeman, it's become something else. Are you okay? Freeman invited us to go inside her sister's room in the dementia ward to see her condition. She is bed bound. She can't feed herself. She can't move her feet. She has trouble communicating, is nearly deaf, and can barely speak. We aren't saying her name or showing her face because of what happened earlier this year. Without that state worker coming to you and sharing this information with you, do you think Kashmir ever would have told you that your sister was sexually abused? No. Mm -mm. No, not at all. The sexual abuse is spelled out in a report obtained by the Como 4 investigators put together by state and federal agencies. The abuse started in mid-January between a man known as Resident 1 and Freeman's sister, seen here as Resident 3, both patients in that dementia ward. The report said that a housekeeper saw Resident 1 standing over Freeman's sister with his jeans around his legs, holding on to her hand and forcing her to touch his genitals. She wasn't able to call for help, fight back or even move. It makes you sick, doesn't it? The housekeeper hollered at him to stop. The director of nursing was told, but no one outside Kashmir Convalescent Center knew it happened. The center did call Freeman, but only about her sister suddenly losing weight. And I said, you should call me and tell me she's not eating, but you can't tell me why she's not eating. Well, that was the first case. The report says that the abuse kept happening to other patients. Kashmir staff witnessed resident one pull another patient's hands to his groin, but that a nurse did nothing other than to make eye contact with him to get him to stop. He also tried to get into Freeman's sister's room two more times until she was finally able to get staffers to understand that resident one was sexually abusing her. The report says the director of nursing services viewed what was going on as nothing more than consensual activities between dementia patients. The man kept making advances, yet the director said, quote, there isn't anything we can do until he crosses the line. How does that not cross the line? I have, and they, all they had to do was call the state. What finally made that happen? On February 2nd, a staff member saw resident one take the key to the dining room, followed him there, and found him fondling another dementia patient's breasts. The Como 4 investigators obtained that police report and 911 call with Chelan County. He's getting more and more sexual with some of his ex-boys. 
In the end, they transported him to the hospital for a medication adjustment, not to treat him for the abuse. He's believed to be at Central Washington Hospital in Wenatchee. I actually brought them in. When we visited Kashmir, Convalescent Center operator Bill Dronin showed up. He'd already declined our request for an interview. Freeman lit into him. Your aides could have called when this first happened. Should have. We pressed him for more. That needs to be done more here. Here? Yeah. Well, I... Dronin admitted to us off camera that he was remorseful and that none of this should have ever happened. An apology is one thing. A punishment is another. It's illegal. And so we knew need to do further investigation. Senator Barbara Bailey chairs the legislature's committee on aging and disability. She was disturbed by the situation at Kashmir and how the abuse went under the radar. Mandatory reporting is extremely important. It is the law. Prominent elder law attorney Mark Kosharadsky dismisses any talk of consent. After reading the reports, he believes not reporting this was deliberate. And the choice here was to cover it up, not to report it, pretend it's not happening. Investigations into nursing homes are handled with both the state and federal governments. The state licenses the facilities. The feds award Medicaid or Medicare money to them. That situation is horrific. That's federal investigator Stephen Chickering speaking by phone from D.C. about the Kashmir report. It found the center violated mandatory reporting rules, that it, quote, failed to recognize the behaviors as sexual abuse and did not act to protect residents there. So what has happened is you have a culture over there that it's okay to abuse these people, and that's just not right. Handing out punishments for those findings is up to the state, DSHS. Options include suspending or firing staff members, fines, even shutting the place down. Instead, DSHS ordered Kashmir to write proper policies for recognizing sexual conduct and consent, something the law already requires. The center promised to increase staff training and that Kashmir had to pay the feds $6,300, a fine that's less than the rate to live one month in the Kashmir Convalescent Center. And they're pushing paper and it's just slapping my hand. Maybe it's not a crime to do it to a demented person because their mind is gone. That's how I feel the state is telling people. I don't believe that. One sister simply trying to protect another. I just want her happy and safe. And that didn't happen. No. You know, I'm not a quitter. And I am obscenely stubborn. Contrite yet combative, apologetic while argumentative, Drew Morrison is a contradiction, a charming man with unshakable problems. It baffles my mind. It's very disappointing. Complete ripoff for them, to be honest. In September, we revealed Morrison's failed payment to a breast cancer charity, giving them zero dollars despite promising the proceeds of all sales. I don't remember one where it said all proceeds, but um, if it did, uh, as I said, then, then that's a mistake then. Morrison bristled at the suggestion party goers were duped and said expenses had to be paid before charities. The event was in May. You promised end of July $1,500. And still nothing as yeah, of late she November. Would, yeah, I mean, um, you know, things, things definitely did change from then. Ballet, appetizers, drinks. Morrison says City Guru wasn't able to stay afloat and shut down. A number of investors bought shares in the now defunct company. Morrison couldn't explain what happens next and if they'll be paid back. The Washington State Department of Financial Institutions, which looks into securities fraud, recently launched an investigation into City Guru. Morrison had no knowledge of that, but did address the problems with his previous company, Path Investments. Uh, it's just one of those that is a company that kind of went somewhere and then just didn't. The Arizona-based foreclosure business went belly up too. All because I trusted a man called Drew Morrison. Investor Gary Wooliver won a lawsuit alleging Morrison spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on himself instead of the business. How many homes did you end up purchasing or flipping? I don't know. Um, under path? I really don't know. Records from the lawsuit expose wild charges by Morrison, who admitted he was the only one with access to Pat's business accounts. Can we track what, every, what pennies is whose and what it went to? No, we can't. 
and that's also well, but why that's what bank statements literally are for well you know and if if the things he accused me of were so black and white then it wouldn't have taken him so long to get to where they're at and that's he that's didn't have access to the accounts true well, he's he had, had to sue while. you in order to see where you spent his and, money and and again if 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 his accusations had been so black and white and those statements would have shown that i think it would have been a completely different story in his lawsuit but you lost that lawsuit yeah i i lost it by default at heart of the suit were promissory notes Morrison signed but never paid, calling the deal more personal than paperwork. Well, a notarized promissory note is far different Again, than Again, look at it black and white. Again, you just, you, you, can, you can ignore the relationship that him and I have had. Or you well, no, we, we have to focus on the law. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Yes. You know what, John? Yes. There were multiple contempt orders for Morrison's refusal to hand over records, and he uh, didn't even show up for a number of hearings. I didn't get my day in court. Say again. I didn't get my day in court, so you know, and I believe I lost on some technicalities because I, you know, I'm not an attorney. I think there's truth and there's process, and maybe you're a very black and white person. Fine. Um, well, I think the court is black and white, not me. It doesn't mean that they understand truth. It doesn't mean they got it right. In June, Morrison lost another lawsuit by default in Arizona. He didn't show when a different PATH investor accused him of pocketing a $55,000 loan. All told, Morrison owes nearly $1.5 million in court judgments and fees. For his investors, we did get one important answer. I kind of thought that it wasn't my fault, but, you know, when I look back at it... Whose fault was it? Uh, it was, it's mine. John Humbert, Como Investigators. between mother and son. There's Nolan right there. Brother and sister. He was just a really good kid. Aren't easily broken. Had a wonderful time. Unless it's a break no one can fix. And it was about his junior or senior year where he just started. There were just little things that started to decline yeah, at that point. Yeah, things just definitely declined. He is truly schizophrenic. And he needs medicine. And there is absolutely nothing that I can do. Sandy and Lauren Flamini call Nolan an intelligent boy with a future as bright and as big as a smile. He's now a man who hasn't been given a chance to heal. I want Nolan to be in a facility that can help him. Nolan's normal high school angst took a darker turn in his late teens. Treatment plans. Family treatment history plans. and court records show that's when the schizophrenia took hold. When Sandy's mothering couldn't calm the mental anguish and violence brewing inside his mind, she had to put him out instead of risking more attacks in their Lacey home. So I told Nolan that I would always be there for him. And so it's called tough love. And I, I had to do that. While on the street in February, Nolan was arrested in Thurston County for smashing a post office window. His documented mental health history became the focus. Once a court orders a competency hearing, experts say patients should be evaluated in seven days. For Nolan, it took 34. We are not mental health professionals. We are corrections deputies and law enforcement officers. Why? Thurston County Sheriff John Snazza is blunt, frustrated that cities and counties must pick up the slack when patients like Nolan are in his jail. They tend to act out because they are scared. And that's not where they're supposed to be. And that's not where they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be at Western State Hospital. By court order, an inmate found mentally incompetent should be transferred to Western State within a week. Nolan's seven days came and went. 14 people were ahead of him on the wait list. It was another 30 days before he finally got into Western. DSHS has not been uh, held accountable for not being able to provide the beds that they're required to by law. Nolan isn't alone. SNASA estimates 35 to 40 percent of his inmate population have significant mental health issues, but it takes most 45 to 60 days to get a bed at Western. I don't want to tell them how to do it. That's their job. DSHS says budgets and staffing shortages keep the agency from doing that job. The failure rings up another price tag, too. Records compiled by DSHS reveal that the mental health backlog cost counties and city jails more than $1.6 million every six months. It isn't necessarily what it costs the sheriff. It's what it costs the community. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so emotional. I know, Mom. It's okay. So the battles continue for families like the Flaminis. I'm probably going to cry, too. Fighting for Nolan to get help he needs. 
that judges, doctors, and loved ones say he deserves. Well, they don't have enough room. They don't have the facilities and they don't have the ability to properly evaluate these people and take care of them. And it, it's a quagmire.